everyone a vlog style review or not that's so much review but vlogs just a vlog post this week uh because i didn't get into this last month last week but july is pride is specifically disability pride month um as a person who is on the autism spectrum i've talked i've talked about my experiences with disabilities and with my disability um and how certain ways in which I um, it's impacted how I interact with the world and also how I have interpreted and gotten reads from certain forms of media in um, from a autistic lens in the past. Uh, but I figured I would for this month for Disability Pride Month again talk a bit give say it's five things uh, about my experience with autism and how I in, go th through the world that um, that I feel comfortable talking about. So, and I'll, also in terms of like useful things that would be nice for conventions and that sort of thing to make them more approachable and acceptable for uh, accessible, I should say, for people who are on the autism spectrum, such as myself. I keep in mind the um the disclaimer applies here that people who that my experiences as a person with autism are not monolithic um there are plenty of other people that are, like autism is a spectrum and it's not just like a two-dimensional spectrum um like in from like infrared to ultraviolet it's I'd almost compare it to like the, the, the spider graph kind of thing in terms of the axes of how people on the autism spectrum interact with the world. And that it also fluctuates in terms of how we're able to, what we're able to work with at any given time. So with that in mind, um, talk about a couple things. Um, first off, if you've seen me at conventions, um, you will probably see me with some form of headphones or earbuds on. This is a thing f I do for um, managing noise. Even if I am not in the middle of listening to any audio on my headphones or earbuds, I will keep them in as a way of managing my background lo noise level as a way of mitigating auditory stimulus. Because I, because I have autism, one, one of the ways it manifests is I have difficulty screening out varieties of background noise. It makes things difficult for me to screen out conversations from different people or that sort of thing. This may also mean that in, under certain circumstances, if I'm in a very noisy environment, I may become a close talker. Um, to re just restate that to re enunciate better, it's another issue I ha I've had um, and have is a close talker. That is, I will move my head close to you and your mouth so I can hear you better. Um, that's just because there's a lot of noise in the background, and while certain places, I think convention may do certain things to help mitigate the noise flow through the convention, it's nothing's perfect, and certainly large cavernous rooms can echo like hell. So that and so that is in a thing I may do is have earbuds for trying to screen out ambient background noise, and then also in moving my head close to yours. Um, additional thing. Um, I have, uh, sensory issues beyond just screening out background noise. Um, certain textures and mouthfeels for foods are more appealing to me than others. Some are less pleasant to me than others. Um, certain, like, to make an example, I, like, I like it, like, if I'm going to eat tofu, I like a firm tofu more than a, uh, soft tofu. Um... I like having that more firm texture in my mouth. Um, when I have fried eggs, I will do cook fried eggs over hard because I don't like runny eggs. I don't like them over easy because the runniness of the yolk doesn't work for me. It doesn't take. It feels gross to me. That sort of thing. Um, I also particularly like things with a firm. Like, really do the, the firm tofu, like a firm outside layer. I, consequently, I'm, while it's not good for me health-wise, I'm a sucker for certain types of fried foods. Um, 
particularly when we're getting to like uh, Chinese food or like um, kara or Japanese food like karaage or Korean fried chicken or that sort of thing. Uh, the it's not just a taste standpoint under those circumstances. It's also the mouth. It's also from a mouth feel standpoint. That sort of thing. Um, related to the convention stuff, by the way, this is where I get into useful guidelines for conventions. Um, if you are doing a sensory room um, for people who have noise stimulus issue, or over stimulus issues, such as myself, and again, this isn't just a autism thing. Other disabilities have this as well. Um, if you are, have your room set up where you need to schedule time in advance, I do recommend having accessible to the main body of the convention, alternative noise options. And by that, I mean, to use an example from like Kimura Khan, having a, like they have their manga library and last year, their manga library and their single viewing room were in the adjacent hotel to the convention center. But they did have, I believe they did have their quiet room in the convention itself, in, in the convention center itself. When you, you can sometimes anticipate getting sensory, getting hit with sensory overload. Um, but like, I can sometimes tell like, okay, I am not overloaded yet, but I expect that I could be in a bit and leading to a situation where I will um, make a, where I might make a reservation to use a quiet room. That said, that's not always a guarantee that I will be able to anticipate that in advance. Sometimes, as the commercials say, life comes at you fast. And having a option for a quiet space to help a shot to help mentally recompose myself is that I can get to at a relatively short notice works for this. And it doesn't have to be totally quiet. It can have like a, just a significantly lower ambient noise level. And so if you're doing a convention, a manga reading library works well for this. Everyone's expecting to be quiet. Everyone's going to sit and read their manga quietly. That works very well. I mean, yes, there'll be some quiet, there'll be Minimal amounts of noise, somebody reading something and chuckling. But otherwise, this like that is a good on-the-fly alternative. And having that be more accessible to the main body of a convention works well for this. Similarly, a viewing rooms viewing rooms have also worked well for the, me for this as well. Because usually when most people are in a viewing room, they're watching whatever the movie or TV show is. And having a variety of options with programming at different types also works well because I can find one that is more chill. And indeed, like if you had say two view, if you had a viewing room that was basically on the healing anime track, um, more quiet shows, um, stuff like laid back camp or sweetness and lightning or that sort of thing works again, well in a pinch. So again, having so if you even if your quiet space room requires reservations because it's the one you have and you need to make deal with space requirements and that sort of thing, it is important to have some sort of alternative option available for people who need something more urgently. Um, other general notes. Um, I am not great with putting names to faces. I wouldn't fully describe myself as face blind. I will look at someone and recognize, oh, that guy? But it'll it'll take me some time to attach a name to that face. I will recognize a, recognize a person, but not necessarily re remember the name. And this can happen with people who are, who are friends who I've known for years. Um, name tags are great for this in convention sets. So, Good news for places like Comoricon where they have you put the convention, where you have you put the name badge um, in a clearly visible place. Um, but otherwise, if I look confused or don't necessarily remember your name or confuse you for someone else, that's not like that. that that's that's my autism at play. 
So if we, if we've met before, even if like I'm by met before, I mean, including if we've met like in high school and we haven't seen each other in a while and we've met before and like that level of met before, and I seem confused and I seem like I recognize you, but I don't remember you saying your name is and maybe additional information related to that connection is, is deeply helpful. Or if you're a former coworker from a previous job where we'd hit it off or something like that, that sort of thing. Other useful notes about me and my autistic experiences. Um, like that, I can honestly, that, like that covers a good selection of things um, for just general stuff that I've observed in life that I haven't talked about in the past necessary. That isn't that I feel comfortable discussing in this broader format. Uh speaking of convention stuff, then might as well get this out of the way. Um I'm gonna be going to a couple conventions this year. I have already registered for KimoraCon. I am not paneling this year. Um last year's panel did go well. I'm pleased with how it well went both in terms of the audience and in terms of me giving a panel for the first time. Um, main reason for not paneling again this year is I like the vinyl panel from last year you know, went great. I don't really have enough expansion material to make it worth doing again right away this year. Um, I have a few, couple ideas for another panel, but I haven't put everything together for that yet. I'm still doing some research. That feels like a next year panel um, on that front. I might if I if I go to I'll also honestly if, if I decide to go to SakuraCon um, in the future this might be a SakuraCon panel um, for final for as far as the vinyl collecting collecting thing goes. Uh, otherwise, um, I am also will be going to Portland Metro Gaming Expo this year. I still need to get my registration stuff for that. Um, but I intend to go there. I am not submitting a panel or anything like that. Uh, honestly, I think with their panels set up the way things go, it feels more like a, they ask you, not you ask them if you can panel. Um, I might be wrong on that. And uh, like, honestly, I like their panel lists are high, are big enough names that I feel feel like for submitting a panel I, I get a decent number of views here but I know but, but most of the people who panel at uh, PRGE are significantly bigger names so like, I'm I'm not going to try and hang with that crowd at the moment but I will be there next um, this for uh, 2023 Portland Metro Gaming Expo um, as always with conventions if you see me um, unless I'm in a hurry to go to look like, uh, look like I'm in a hurry to go somewhere. If you see me just hanging out, um, feel free to say hi. Um, if we are in a common panel room and, um, the panel hasn't started yet and I'm just kind of hanging out waiting for the panel to start, again, feel free to say hi and say you like the show or that sort of thing. Um, but that's where, uh, yeah, that covers that side of things. And um, otherwise, um, catch you later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.